Milo, we're getting amazing comments on Facebook this morning. People talking about, of course, flooded basements. There's no way in or out of Hughesville. Things are closed, flooded. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, what's happening now goes back. Tom's a child of Kingston, right, Tom? This goes back to when you were like four or five years old, this type of thing. Agnes, seven years old. June is 72. Milo, five feet on the first floor. Yeah. Do you remember it pretty well? I remember it very well. I remember my dad waking me up early in the morning saying, we got to go. <laughs> That's pre levy so uh, things have changed, but still, this is <laughs> this is uh, once, twice in a century type uh, flooding that's happening now. So uh, let's start it with the, uh, first of all, me putting down the umbrella because uh, I want to get down and dirty here when I work in the rain. And another thing is th the press conference may break into this forecast at any time. We got Murdoch on the scene and the latest river levels. You know, we always kind of joke about the government bureaucrats for the National Weather Service and hydrologists. Now these hardworking guys, we're all like, come on, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me information. And we're waiting for the six o'clock update. That'll be any second now. That upper left, you're saying, hey, Seneca, you showed me this yesterday. That's the whole point. Nothing has changed. Number one, upper low. Number two, actually, Cotty is moving actually a little bit closer to us. So that plume of moisture just squeezed right up in between the two. And it takes a lot of bad luck to create something like this. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with the world or the universe. It's just some bad luck. It's hurricane season and you have number one, a stuck low, and we're just stuck in between the two of them like you're getting punched in the face from both sides. That guy in the right, by the way, fought Muhammad Ali. So here's that low, here's uh, Kadi, and there's that plume of moisture in between. Zoom on in. So there we are in between these two, and these plumes have set up in a way that in some instances, only 50, 60 miles wide. And if you were in them, you got four, five, six inches of rain yesterday and the day before. And if you were outside of them, it's just a normal kind of drizzly day with a quarter of an inch of rain. And uh, there is this plume set up. Last night, notice it has shifted north and broken up. And this thing has kind of converged and merged with it. There's some thunderstorms with this. And here's a new plume that's starting to form. Didn't really anticipate this one, so this may now add itself to the rain that is already super saturated everywhere just west of Wilkes-Barre Scranton. A closer look at that rain as it stands now. It's more now in, the t in terms of light rain, some moderate rain. The thunderstorms are pretty much restricted to this band here. But these folks here have been getting a break for the last like three, four hours. Now, unfortunately, this is moving in. Disgusting. I don't know what to say or what to tell you. Nine inches of rain in Binghamton, almost nine in Williamsport over the last two days. and an I'll ask you this question. How much rain do we get in a normal month here in northeastern PA? Pick a spot anywhere. About three, four inches, if that. This is three months of rain in a day, a day and a half. That's unheard of. So just so you realize what uniqueness has happened, this is 24-hour rainfall. The previous one was two-day rainfall. Didn't change much in Binghamton. 8.71 inches of rain in a day. I hear that, I see that, and I'm like, no, Snedeker, you're misunderstood. That's what happened. And that flows into the Susquehanna and it swells downstream, which then the hydrologists now are trying to, they're putting in their algorithms, these numbers, it's, it's crunching out data, it's trying to predict swelling of the river and how high it'll go downstream. That's all that's happening right now. And these are the flood watch warning areas. These are the flash flood warning areas. Notice Lackawanna County and Carbon County out of it because of that little gap. They were outside of the band, outside of this band and this band. I was lucky enough to live in there, not too much damage at my house normally, my cellar, my basement, the sump pumps, ugh, it's crazy. The dog's barking, my wife's running around saying, check, crazy, but okay at my house this time. 60s, wish I could say that for everyone. Highs today in the 70s, uh, and the steady rain will be tapering off this afternoon. Look at this convoluted backflow. That thing's just pedaling upon itself. If this doesn't move, this doesn't move. And this is moving towards us. This is Hurricane Cotty, we will not get it but it will tend to compress and smash us more with those converging currents in the atmosphere. Watch the computer model. Thursday, 6 a.m., here we are. Cadia, upper low. Want to make the rain disappear? Watch this. When that happens, the plume doesn't know what to do, so it has more room to spread out and it breaks down. Good news. Cadia stays east. This thing retrogrades back. By Friday, we're looking for car cloudy to partly sunny skies. Cadia never makes landfall, gone. Once it's gone, the atmosphere can start flowing again, get things moving, nothing stuck. So it will be better this weekend. But I want you to notice Saturday, see this thing? It's still there. If it's still there, a few scattered showers can form in its periphery. And I love saying periphery. So here we go. There's that plume. Where's it going? Shifting to the east. 
there's your rainfall. Let's go into the future. Here we go. So there's that big upper level low that's going to start going this way. It's actually starting now, watch, pushing back. So now the rain pulls back with it, doesn't know what to do, breaks up. Three, four, five o'clock today. Much of tonight, tomorrow, if anything, a passing shower. Tomorrow, the sun may peak out at times, passing shower. Saturday, clouds and sun, passing showers. See this? This is that remnant of that big upper level low. It still can manage to put out some showers, but we're too far to the east, so we go partly sunny. Latest river data will be updated shortly. This is maybe an hour old, but it's as new as you can get. Mishapin, 40.4 by tomorrow morning. This is the current stage. This is the projection, the green dotted line. When it gets into the red and the purple, you worry, you have concerns. If you're from this area, check out uh, our detailed website for the uh, river data or call your local municipality or authority. Bloomsburg, 31.5 by Friday morning. I haven't seen it go into the purple there in my career. That's the projection by tomorrow. Danville, 30.5 Friday afternoon. Again, into the purple. I haven't seen that in my career here. Wilkes-Barre, 39.6. The highest I have seen in my career here at Newswatch 16. That's up into the purple by tomorrow morning. We'll give you an update on that. Old Forge, Lackawanna, you folks, not to worry along the Lackawanna should be fine. Maybe up a little bit to uh, basically if flood stage at all. Berryville, Delaware also looks pretty good. Just some um, minor floodplain rises there. Partly sunny by Saturday and Sunday, just a scattered shower or two Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Some scattered showers by Tuesday into Wednesday, but much of the time this weekend and next week looks dry. We have that live uh, report coming from uh, Murdoch. He's got the latest from the government bureaucrats with the information you need, and we'll be right back.